Thank you, Sir Minister, for regional development. And again, we will start with topical questions. And the first member of, on the list, Mrs. Dolores Kelly, has withdrawn her name, so I call Mr. Michael Majimsey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister, in terms of the long running saga of the provision of residence parking schemes in Inner South Belfast, and specifically Strand Millis, the market, Sandy Row, and Donegal Pass, what progress uh, has been made recently to allow us to give an undertaking to those residents' communities about such a provision? Mr Deputy uh, Speaker, uh, grateful to the member for his, for his question uh, and also want to pay tribute for his uh, ongoing interest uh, uh, in this uh, matter uh, uh, because uh, he has met me, uh, taken the opportunity to meet with me along with groups, interested groups in the areas around his constituency. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it has not yet been possible to uh, implement a scheme uh, in, in any of the areas, but my hope is uh, that, that we continue to work at that to resolve out, uh, outstanding issues uh, and uh, to uh, ensure that uh, a scheme can be brought forward, because I think once established uh, in one area, I think these schemes uh, have the potential uh, to be enacted uh, throughout uh, other areas, and I'm aware of, of other interest uh, in different places that people want to see progress. I'm keen to see progress, uh, and I know that the member is too. Chief, for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Minister for his answer? And there seems to be some optimism there. But bearing in mind, we began this about 10 years ago when John Spiller was a direct rural minister. Uh, uh, road service appeared to have fought a, a very valiant fight uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the, the provision of these schemes. Conditions in these communities have deteriorated since the advent of Belfast on the move. Uh, parking in these areas is absolutely uh, uh, dire. Uh, critical for these communities, and can we have the, your, the Minister's assurance that, bearing in mind the last consultation finished a few weeks ago, uh, that we are now on the cusp of getting provision in this area? Thank you. I am grateful to the member, uh, and, and I accept uh, the frustration that, uh, that he feels about it. It is equally frustrating for me, and, and, and as, as he rightly says, um, it is a period of years uh, way be beyond uh, my tenure. Uh, as Minister, uh, but nonetheless, I, as Minister, am keen uh, to see a uh, scheme, a scheme, and schemes advanced, and uh, 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 and I will reflect again on the current situation in the area, uh, areas that he has referred to, and we'll see uh, if progress can be made at the earliest stage. I call Mr. William Irwin. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister? If you can tell the House the cost to date of the vesting of land for the A5. Can I thank the, the, the member for his uh, question? And, and again, I think uh, the member in topical questions last time uh, raised the issue of A5, uh, and it uh, clearly remains topical with him. Um, the, the, the answer is largely the same in that, um, uh, yes, there has been uh, approximately £60 million expended on, on, on the AFI project to date. The project is delayed, as the member well knows, for uh, very well rehearsed um, uh, reasons that he has heard and uh, the House has heard and indeed the Executive have heard. Uh, and, uh, um, but uh, in that it is delayed, it is not uh, abandoned, and of course he will know that it is uh, an Executive priority. Mr William Irwin. Can I say to the Minister, I have been speaking to farmers that have lost uh, the use of land and buildings for over a year now. Not only have they not received any compensation, but no one has ever come near them to assess the losses incurred. Uh, can, the minister, uh, does the minister, can I ask the Minister, uh, is this acceptable? And can I ask the Minister when these farmers can expect any payment? Well, I am grateful to the, uh, to the member, and I, and I have to say, I, I would want to challenge and would need to challenge, I think, some of the assertions that he's made. Uh, I, I think there, there has been uh, ongoing uh, contact uh, with, with landowners and decisions made and agreed and arrived at as to whether or not um, uh, the landowners themselves would carry out um, um, uh, uh, existing accommodation uh, works in the current situation that we find ourselves. And I am certainly aware that uh, uh, a number of landowners um, who had applied for uh, up to the 90 per cent of, of compensation uh, in terms of the A5 scheme and the loss of land had received 
and have received their compensation. Um, it remains a very fluid situation, in many ways a challenging situation, given the legal and the financial difficulties. We are working our way through it, but I do not accept that, uh, that road service or my department uh, have in any way uh, been unhelpful uh, to uh, uh, resolving issues by mutual agreement with uh, landowners in the current situation. Trevor Clark. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, the Minister was aware that I had tabled a question before in relation to street lighting um, in residential areas to the rears of properties. Can the Minister tell the House exactly when that policy was changed? That, my, my understanding is that that policy, again, uh, w was changed a number of years ago uh, and um, certainly it, it predated my time. Uh, and again, it may even have predated the devolution uh, in this place. Um, and I understand the point uh, that he makes, but uh, the policy uh, is, uh, is in place and currently I have no plans to, to have it reviewed. Uh, I know that a number of members have, have uh, written to me on the issue particularly of um, new lighting schemes and where um, old lights are being made redundant. Uh, I have sympathy for the position that uh, many people find themselves in, but uh, the policy is such that I am not able to uh, show the flexibility that perhaps um, he would like and certainly I may like too. I call Mr Trevor Clark for a supplementary. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Given, uh, Minister, you are the Minister of the Department and I am sure have the power to review any policy, would you suggest that it is acceptable where there is upgrade in street lightings currently that people are now left in fear because, now, particularly this time of year, where we are going into the winter and the dark, the dark nights, where people who had enjoyed in the past street lighting, and I would question maybe the Minister should look in terms of his department because the department official told me that the policy only changed within the last number of months, hence these street lights have been removed, and maybe that this would be better use of money than the £60 million pound that was squandered in terms of the A5. I'm grateful to the member for his supplementary question. Uh, I, I, again, I have to say that um, I, um, it, you simply, uh, as ministers, simply don't conjure up uh, and are not allowed to conjure up uh, changes in policy without uh, proper uh, consultation and adhering to um, all of the various uh, Section 75 and, and other equality uh, 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 issues. Um, I, I understand uh, the, the point that he makes. But I do, I, I, and he seemed to make uh, a reference at the end to the FI uh, project again. I remind the member his party is fully supportive at executive level of the FI. Call Mrs. Judith Cochrane. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask um, the Minister, given the, the difficult economic environment in which our businesses are currently operating, um, does he agree that his department has a role in supporting the initiatives run by local traders' associations which promote shopping locally? Grateful to the Member uh, for her uh, supplementary question. And indeed, uh, yes, I do <coughs> believe that um, as an executive and certainly uh, as someone in charge of a department. Um, that um, uh, all efforts should be made to continue to support uh, the local economy uh, and traders. And, and I think we all know how, how difficult uh, trading uh, um, uh, has been um, in the town centres, in the city centres and in uh, uh, places. And I was in uh, the members' constituency uh, last week in the Ballyhackamore area and, and took the opportunity to speak. Uh, with traders and to learn at first hand some of the, the problems that they are experiencing. Of course, most of the, the, the concerns uh, remain with the, the high cost of rates, uh, which is uh, a matter for DFP. But nevertheless, uh, I, I do take on board. Uh, and, and what I have tried to do as Minister in respect of parking, uh, the member will know that I did not implement uh, on-street car parking charges and, uh, and indeed have successfully argued um, at executive level for a moratorium on car parking uh, increases until at least 2015. for supplementary. Thank you, and I thank the Minister um, for his answer and, and his support for small businesses. I'm wondering, could the Minister therefore explain the rationale that his department used, which seemingly targeted honest, hard-working um, business owners of the Ballyhackamore Traders Association, when it requested that they remove their Eat Shop Live banners from street furniture? whilst at the same time allowing uh, tattered flags, which surely distract from business opportunities, to remain on the same lampposts? I am grateful to the member for uh, her supplementary question, but I am not sure that uh, the Alliance Party are in a particularly strong um, uh, 
uh, stance to, 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 to criticise anybody given the flags protest and as a result of their decision at Belfast City Hall, uh, the, the problems that emerged from that. So I'm afraid I'm not going to take lectures on, 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 flag, uh, on, on flags uh, from uh, the Alliance Party. I do uh, I have to say to the member that street furniture is, uh, is an issue. There are issues of public safety that have to be adhered to, uh, and the, the member should recognise that. And, you know, whilst uh, some discretion and some flexibility can be arrived at, um, uh, then uh, uh, I, I think we're happy to, to, to facilitate that. What I do say is, we, I felt I had a very productive meeting with the, the, the traders of Ballyhackamore uh, uh, last week. The member wasn't present at that, and I don't know then uh, the readout that she's got uh, on, on that. But nevertheless, uh, I heard it firsthand the issues that were raised uh, with me, and I was encouraged. And I'm encouraged to see the economic activity in Ballyhackamore. Call Miss Michelle McElveen. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister for an update on the possibility of bringing forward construction of road improvements at the A7 at Dornan's Rock, just outside Sainfield? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for her uh, supplementary question and, and, and how topical this is. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but it's clearly topical in the Dornan's Rock area. Um, the, uh, the, the, uh, I have discussed, I think, at... Um, uh, with members and certainly uh, in response to questions, uh, the possibility of uh, bringing forward uh, a, a, a clutch of schemes, uh, uh, road improvements, would I think, which would I think make a significant um, uh, contribution and give um, uh, a lot of relief to uh, the travelling public in, in key areas. And I think. Uh, the, the scheme that she's uh, mentioned could perhaps fall into that. I've had recent discussions with the Finance Minister. I want to pursue those and, uh, and encourage that um, a line in a budget can be created whereby we can make, uh, bring forward these schemes because sometimes the big schemes, the grandiose schemes, uh, whilst important, um, can encounter difficulties, either legal or financial. Uh, and I think on the ground, uh, people would be much more impressed by the work of this House, of this Assembly and this Executive, if we were able to create uh, road improvements that they could very visibly see were improving their area. Ms. Michelle McElveen for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And, and, and obviously, um, the inclusion of the A7 in um, the October monitoring round would be very helpful. Um, but um, without the specifics around that particular scheme, would he be able to give me any information on the A24 Ball and Hinch bypass? Grateful to the um, we move rather deftly there from, from Dorns Rock to, uh, to, to Ball and Hinch bypass. And indeed, uh, and Ball and Hinch bypass, I have no difficulty in saying, uh, is a scheme worthy of support. In fact, uh, uh, my own party leader, uh, also a member for the Strangford area, Mike Nesbitt, has been very uh, keen to, uh, to, to promote that scheme. As the member will know, uh, I've met with um, uh, traders and local representatives in Ballinahinch. We understand uh, the, uh, the issues that are uh, uh, prevalent there. Uh, I have to say there are still a, a number of stages to be gone through in terms of um, uh, the technical side of things, as well as leading then ultimately to procurement. So it is very likely that the earliest it would be would be in the new budgetary period. Well, Mr. Sammy Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, I welcome the progress on the two road schemes in East Ampton, the A2 and the A8. But there are many people who still are unhappy with the way in which the department is dealing with some of the compensation issues. Could the minister explain to me why his department has allowed documentation which would actually help? in deciding compensation levels from the Commissioner to be destroyed? Well, I'm grateful to the member for his, um, uh, his question and, and obviously for uh, his support uh, for, for the schemes, both the A2 and the A8, uh, and I think they, they will substantially improve um, with travelling times and the connectivity that is so necessary. Uh, I, the member has, has raised a particular issue. Um, if, if, he, if he wishes to write to me directly uh, with, with the detail, uh, I, I, I'm happy uh, to give him a full and detailed explanation. Order. Uh, I'm afraid that's the time for topical questions is now up, yeah. so we will move on to those oral questions.